YouTube, my name's Lance, welcome to Bundy Bear's Shed. Well, what's been going on? <laughs> Last week we didn't do a video. Um, we, I, I took on a job for a friend of mine with a Fordson Major front axle and kingpins and things like that. And, and uh, uh, it has an L4 engine in it, which is a, um, the dealers did a Perkins um, retrofit in, instead of the old petrol Caro engines in them in the old E27N Fordsons um, Perkins bought out a kit to put the L4 diesel engine in it and like this is back in the late 40s 50s I, I believe and um, so in being that Perkins made a whole new front axle pivot so the, the housing in front of the fan right underneath it had different stud patterns to the old engine, the old Ford made engine and um, so this this front casting that Ian had was a one of a kind um, as in the only tractors that had them were the ones that were retrofitted with the L4 engine so um, being the case you couldn't get a second hand one or anything like that so where the, you have your, your front bolster that holds your radiator up here and um, under that you have your front axle pivot and the front axle is bent backwards a little bit um, which would help it with its steering but in bending the axle backwards um, it gives leverage on that front pivot pin and what happens there is where the hole goes through you have a yoke comes down where the hole comes through for the pin for the axle to pivot on well it gets worn at the back at the top and at the front at the bottom and so not being able to get a new housing um, we decided that we'd set that up in the mill and, and bush it and um, we had to make a new axle pivot pin up you can't buy them anymore so we made one of them out of a bit of um, 4140 and um, the <coughs> pardon me the bush that goes through the front axle we made one of those and reamed it to size <coughs> pardon me and um, then the kingpin bushes out where your, where your steering is or where your stub axle goes um, we replaced the bushes in there and um, reamed them to size and a few things like that so we, we had a pretty busy machining weekend for the couple of days um, I had to, well that was two days and um, I took a couple of photos along the way but we didn't take a video it was just one of those jobs where um, we were just chugging along just flat out and um, uh, actually, if you look on my Facebook page, Lance Maskell, M-A-S-K-E-L-L, -L, um, last week sometime I, I put a, a photo there of just boring it where I was using I was using this setup to bore the front axle out and it wasn't ideal, um, this is too skinny and I was getting a little bit of chatter there but look, it was nothing that we couldn't tidy up with a ream and um, a couple of a couple of nice quiet passes going through and a, and a ream we, we got it nice in the end and then we we put a steel bush in and then we bored the bush and um, I made the bush close to size on the lathe um, and we went from there well what I really need to do is get a, a long boring bar that fits snugly in this hole here and it looks to be three quarter to me um, and that would take the chatter out um, this was about the limit, I've even got it sticking out a bit more there than it should um, because it was right on its limit so um, look there's a little video of that on my Facebook page and down below Ian loved it, he's, um, he's not into Facebook much, he's got a Facebook page but um, he loved it, he said oh, I can keep the pictures coming so through the day when I was doing it I'd just take a, take a happy snap and chuck on my Facebook page for Ian to, so, to have a look at him of you know, reaming the bushes and, and things like that but um, my little mill here it was the very limit of what it could do um, I would have liked to power ream but I just didn't have the room on my little hobby thing it's a uh, with a, a little hobby mill like mine doing a big casting like that it's a it's a boy doing a man's job and um, it, it was it was right on its limit but we actually got to do it and that's that's one of the old actual pivot pins that we made, uh, that we, we copied. Uh, yeah, that, it's not particularly worn badly, but it's got rust in the middle here, so it needed to be replaced. So 
So Ian's got a nice front end on his tractor now. It's nice and tight. And um, but um, yeah, we just didn't get time to do a do a stew last week. With that and no, oh, it's been hot here. And um, yeah, mowing, mowing the grass. And, uh, Monday took all day to do the mowing, so um, that's all right. But um, I'm getting an early start today in the shed. It's um, I have a mate just down south a couple of k's, and he showed me his thermometer yesterday in his shed, and it's um, uh, 38 degrees, which is 100 degrees Fahrenheit, and probably same here today. We've got a bit of a heat wave going on, but that's all right. We'll just toughen up a bit and <laughs> I can hook in, and. Um, with with Ian's tractor, um, also today's job is here's this shaft here it goes right from one side of the tractor to the other. Um, it's inch and one eighth, and one end goes the brake pedals, and the other end I'm not sure which end goes the clutch pedal. So that slops around pretty well, and it's got a bit of rust where the seals go, and. You got to remember these tractors are, yeah, you know, late nineteen forties. So I, I went to the steel supplier the other day and I, I bought a bit of um, inch and an eighth forty one forty, and um, I, I've got a great steel supplier in town here. I can just go in and they've got um, they've got ten twenty, which is just a mild steel and quite a selection of nice round bar. Then they've got ten forty five, I think it is. Yeah, and then 4140 to choose from, plus all the alloys and the brass, bronze, the brass, not bronze, and um, things like that. So yeah, you go in, you spend a little bit of money, and away you go. You come with good gear. So, so today's job, the the only thing I can't do with this job is it has woodruff keys. I'll see if I can show you. Yeah, it has woodruff key slots in there. I do have woodruff cutters. But wouldn't you know, not, not this size. So because what happens here is a pedal clamps around there, it clamps onto the shaft and the keys to stop it turning, we're just going to put in a flat key. Um, that'll be great for what this job is. We've got to do a little circlip groove here and a hole down that end. And there's another keyway down here. So that'll be today's exercise. Um, I'm doing my best to keep out, out of the sun. In the shed here I can... Um, I can crank the fan up and put the radio on and sing along. I don't film that because I don't want to get too famous. But um, yeah, we're just we're just being very busy. So um, hopefully this week we can catch up and, and put a bit of a stew out and all that. Um, as for purchasing stuff, um, I, I haven't purchased an awful lot. Um, I didn't have a couple of really tiny boring bars, so I, I hopped on the Evil Bay and picked up this tiny little fella um, yeah did I need it who knows do I have one yep do now <laughs> and, um, and this little threading insert too I thought that'd be handy for some of my um, some of the smaller stuff and well, they, were, they were nine dollars each or something like that so I thought that was okay now I, I put a little clip last time of the of the fly cutter scooting along and um, I was getting a bit of a flame out um, but that stuff we were doing was hard and um, with the new tip on it I don't know if you can see the, the tip bluntened off quite quickly and I was getting sparks um, sparks hooking out and once the edge went off the tool I think you can see why but um, Brian said about clearance and we do have clearance the clearance is built into the tool so, um, yeah, we, we do have the leaf angles there everywhere. But, but look, when I built this, I didn't know if this type of tip would be the good one or not. So, at the same time, I bought a couple of these little fellas that hold the triangle inserts. Um, MTJNR and MTJNL. And the idea was to... Yeah, where, where we had this one, this is a stronger insert with more meat through here. But um, I, got, I bought these ones too and I thought, oh, I didn't know if it would be... Oh, well, I just bought the bloody things. And I thought that might be a you know, finer angle or something like that to go up to the shoulder. Anyway, I 
I bought them, I'll probably give them a try, I don't know when. Um, seem busy at the moment, busier than a bloody mosquito at a nudist camp, I think. But um, we'll get there. Yeah, that's not a race. Um, the Colorado, the problem I've been having with my Holden Colorado, um, before Christmas, the Friday before Christmas, they, um, they repaired the harness on the drop box where it goes in. Um, originally they found a CAN bus problem up the up the top that they fixed. They could actually test it with an ohm meter, so it was something they could see. Um, but that wasn't the main problem, apparently. Um, I got it back on the Monday and then on the Tuesday it, it um, wouldn't start again in the heat, in, in the heat of the day. So um, what they did was they found another terminal plane up on the drop box. Um, and it's a six-speed auto, same as they use in the Corvette Stingrays and things like that. So. Um, it's a good box, but um, I, I read about a bit of a problem with that plug. And anyway, they um, they found a problem with that plug, and they recrimped the terminals that weren't quite right. And um, well, I've been to work two weeks in a row now, and it started every day. Bloody miracle! And um, but look, I, I've, got, I've got to take my hat off to these fellas. It, it's Ross Gray um, Motor City in Bundaberg, and they have the Mitsubishi agency, which that's where we bought our Mitsubishi U. Um, they have the Holden, that's where we bought our Colorado, and they also have the Mazda agency in town. And, and over the Christmas break, um, I, got a, I got a phone call between Christmas and New Year, and it was the service department um, from Ross Gray, and Tommy, the, one of the customer reps, um, it was him, and he said, look, we've just been wondering how your ute went. He says, it's been worrying us. That they, I took it in there and it didn't, they didn't fix it and they were wondering whether the second repair was good or not and I said well <laughs> tell you the truth I haven't driven it much, I, <laughs> pardon me, I, I use it for camping and I had the fridge in there and over Christmas I was using it as an extra beer fridge. So I said I haven't driven it much but I've been to it often. <laughs> and um, so look I, I, was, I was impressed that they, um, that they bothered to ring up, he, he said the fitter that fixed the job um, for us or the mechanic. Um, he was interested to know if the repair was done and, and which is good customer service so after two weeks of it going good I rang him yesterday and I said look it's I can't fault it at the moment it's going great um, I haven't put my scan tool on to see if there's any codes here but I'm sure there's not um, it just hasn't missed a beat so so they're happy they think they've fixed it now I'm happy I think they've fixed it and um, as far as the service department went um, well, you couldn't really fault it. Um, uh, running workshops for years, I know what some of those problems can be like. And, and people say, oh, yeah, the bastard should have fixed it the first time or something like that. Well, it's, that's, that's in a perfect world. Um, it's just not like that quite often. So, um, so look, they've, they've done a good job by me. Um, we're going to buy a new ute. Our Triton, our Mitsubishi Triton is a high clear two-wheel drive. And... It's, it's seven years old now, but it's only, it hadn't done 50,000 kilometres yet, but um, in the next couple of months we're unloading that and we're getting a new four-wheel drive dual cab and um, we're going to set it up for camping and that so the kids can come with us and the grandkids and all that, so we'll have the Colorado set up and we'll have the Triton set up, well, whatever replaces the Triton set up. And, and to tell you the truth, um, I, I bought a new Ford one time and the um, the wipers played up and then they didn't want to fix them because they couldn't look at them for three weeks and, and the service from the Ford agency in town wasn't particularly flash and um, uh, the other mob in town is BMG, Bundaberg Motor Group and um, they have a Honda, Isuzu, Nissan I believe and um, look I haven't heard anything bad about them but look from Ross Gray it's handy and our business is close to Ross Gray so we can just pop up the road at a kilometre and um, drop a car off or pick it up so so yeah we're looking hard um, uh, the, the process has started yeah when you buy a new car and you start doing the research and you look at this and you look at that and you you look at wheel clearance you look at horsepower the, the Holden Colorado like I have the, the ute um, it's it's 500 newton metres torque now and um, so it's the most powerful one in the range um, not that we need an awful lot of power, but they, the youths that have three and a half ton towing, um, that's pretty good to me that tows a tractor around. Um, 
I really like the Mitsubishi Triton because we our Triton's been just a ripper car. You couldn't fault it, like not a problem. You know, we put good tyres on it and did a few things like that, but it's been a great car. And I, I'm sort of leaning towards them, but they only have 3.1 ton towing. So um, we'll see. Stay tuned for that one. But um, oh, another little Evil Bay purchase was I saw some some cheap tips. So I bought three boxes of them just to tuck away in my tip supply. So and, um, nothing too exciting about that, is it? But um, but I'll try and make it a bit more interesting than it has been for you today. Um, oh, not much to do on this shaft, but I do have to cut it to size, polish it up, um, yeah, drill a hole, and a bit of stuff like that. So we'll do that and film that for this stew. Um, and that's about it. If I come across anything else interesting, I'm trying to get in before it gets hot for the day. It's supposed to be 100 degrees, so I've got the fan over there, so we'll... I'm, I'm, it's 6.30 in the morning at the moment, so I'm trying to um, get the jump on the day and um, film a bit of this before I get all filthy and sweaty. And um, later on in the day, I'll probably try and finish the steering on the John Deere. I just haven't had time to do that either. So, anyway, stay tuned. We'll probably. We'll, dip, dip, dip. <laughs> we'll try and make an interesting shoot. And this is our full depth cut, full depth three millimeters. And we're just feeding by hand again. Nice and steady. had to turn the shaft around and we, that's the key way we just did and we know that was true so we have to get it straight up and down so that what I've come up with is put the square there then a little angle gauge there make sure it's at 90 and slowly turn the shaft. There we go. I'll try and get that a little bit closer yet. I could try and get it in frame. That would even be better. And once that's in there, we'll drop the clamp down over the top here, which is this bloke here. And he'll come down over the top and we'll just clamp it exactly in place. Right, you can see we've got the second keyway done. We did it the same as the other one. It's, um, yeah, it'll just sit in there. We have to drill a hole down through the end of the shaft. That's just what we're doing now.
This is 41.40, so we're just popping out the other side. Okay, all we have to do now is give that a blow. We're going to chamfer that edge slightly. We're going to chamfer this edge slightly in the lathe. And then our shaft. There's the shaft finished. And I've just rebushed this pedal and reamed it out to size. So there you go, that'll do us. That's the end of the stew. <laughs> Alright, we'll catch up with you next week, eh? Thanks for watching.